Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna go through the Python installation process using macOS and then we're gonna write our first Python script together. We will also look over how to install Python packages using pip and finally we will review some of the best options out there for text editors and Python IDEs that will help you be more efficient at coding. By the end of this video, your development environment will be up and running and you'll have a good understanding on how to write and run Python code from your macOS machine. If you're running a Windows instead, make sure you check on the video from the link card at the top right corner, where I cover the same Python installation and setup process just for Windows. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we go through the installation process, let's check what version of Python you have installed on your macOS by default. To check that, open up your preferred terminal and type python version. In my case, I'm running Python 2.7. If you already have Python 3 installed and want to skip the installation process, feel free to click on the timestamp links in the description and move forward to the next section, or just keep watching as it won't take long. To install Python, we'll need to open a web browser and navigate to Python's official website, python.org. Then click on download. It's already detected that we're using macOS and it has offered up Python 3, which is the latest major version. You can always scroll down and install a specific Python previous version from this list. For the sake of this video, let's just proceed and download the latest Python installer. Once it's done downloading, run the package file and the Python installer will pop up. Now, this is a pretty standard process. If you've installed software before, then a lot of this will look familiar. We're just gonna click on continue and make sure you read and agree on all the terms, licenses, etc. And finally, the installation process will start. Once finished, you can close the installer and come back to your terminal. Okay, so now instead of typing python dash dash version, let's just type python, then hit tab. See, my system now has python 3 binaries. If you hit python 3 dash dash version, I'll get the version we've just downloaded, 3.8. Now type only python 3 to open up the interactive shell. We can see that it's indeed using Python version 3.8.3, again, the latest version we've just installed. Now the interactive shell allows us to write one single line of Python code at a time. In the interactive shell, you can set up variables, print out their value, and play with them as you please. Interactive shell will also remember variables so you can keep using them over and over again. For instance, we can define a variable called color equals green. We can print it out, we can get its type, type string, we can get the length of the string, five characters, and we can also get the first three letters of the variable. We can define a second variable called colors equals an array of color values, black, color, blue and yellow. Finally, we can iterate over the array values and print each of them inside a loop. Awesome! This is great to try out few single commands, but it's not really convenient when we want to work with a large piece of code. So let's create a Python file and write some lines of code in there. Let's exit the interactive shell by typing exit and then open closed parentheses. I'm gonna change directories here to my labs folder and create a new file called hello.py. I will open up a new tab and then edit the file with Vim Text Editor. We're gonna write a simple hello world application. Let's define a string variable named greeting equals hello world in between single quotes and then on the second line print parentheses and we call this variable greeting. Let me save the file by hitting escape and then W for write and then exclamation mark. 
Now, on the second tab, let's make sure that the file has been written. Let's print out the file content. Now, let's execute the code by typing python hello.py. And here it is, the hello world output. And go back to the file and keep editing the script. For instance, we can import the daytime library. And then, down below, let's define a variable called now equals daytime.daytime.now to get the current date and time. And then print today is curly brackets dot format now. Let's save the file again and then execute the same script on the second tab. Awesome, you've created your first Python script. Since we're importing the daytime library, let me briefly talk about pip. pip stands for pip installs packages or pip installs python. Basically, when we installed Python before, we also installed this tool. pip is a package manager that allows us to install libraries in our system so we can use them in our scripts. We can check that pip is working by typing pip version. Then we can install packages using pip install and then the library name, daytime. It says that daytime is already installed in my system. Just a side note here, you can also use pip with virtual environments to isolate the libraries you install to your specific project instead of installing them globally in your machine. But I will cover this in another video. Lastly, before wrapping up, I want to briefly talk about code editors and IDEs. So we've seen how to create a Python script using Vim. You could also use other text editors such as Nano or Python Idle that comes with the default installation. However, if you want some advanced functionalities, great text editors are Atom.io or Sublime Text, which are open source and cross-platform. They provide nice features such as syntax highlining, code refactoring, the ability to run your script within the text editor, or installing plugins to customize the look and feel or be more efficient while coding. Apart from text editors, you can also use IDEs. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. One of the most popular IDEs out there is Visual Studio Code by Microsoft that works for any programming language, not just Python. And then, specifically for Python, there's also PyCharm by JetBrains. IDEs gives you extra functionality that essentially text editors don't, like intelligent code completion or the ability to pause your code execution and debug your program within the environment. So let's review this and open up PyCharm. Now on the same file, let me retype this line. Now equals date and it's already suggesting us with autocompletion. Daytime dot and now it lists all available functions that can be applied to the daytime class. Down below, let's use this variable now to get the actual hour and minutes. Now dot hour and now dot minute. Finally, let's print time is again curly brackets format hour and minute. Let's save the file and run it within the IDE, this time not from the terminal. See, we get the actual hour and time. Awesome. Okay guys, that was everything I wanted to show you today. At this point, Python is installed and you should be ready to start practicing and getting your hands dirty with Python. To recap, we saw how to install Python and check it's working on a macOS system. We look at how to run Python code interactively from the terminal and how to create a Python file and execute that script using Vim. Finally, we've touched how to install packages and seen few popular text editors or IDs, so make sure you test them out as they bring lots to the table. Again, if you're running a Windows machine, check my previous video where we covered the installation process for this operating system. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe so you get a notification when I upload more Python content and share this video with others that might find it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.